Hi, this is your host, Sapna Bharti, and welcome to another episode of Linux and Open Source uh, Security. And today we have with us, once again, Arshis Gaur, CTO of Polyverse. Arshis, uh, a lot is happening in terms of security in container cloud space. Uh, I just shared a story a few hours ago. We don't even have time to just go through that. But uh, one of the stories that I want to discuss with you is um, Prevesio is a provider of cloud service for scanning container images. They released uh, a report based on a scan of more than 4 million public container images that were found on Docker Hub. And they concluded that just over half, like almost 51%, were rife with critical vulnerabilities. I mean, we have discussed this earlier and uh, that uh, pulling images are not only just security concerns, it's also compliance. You really do not know what's in those uh, images. You know? So running those, it's, it's not a great idea. And when you see things like that, it becomes even more disturbing. So first of all, when you saw the report, what was your first reaction that, hey, this is something we all know, or something like, oh my God, it's so bad. No, I, I had a very um, normal reaction. It's like, oh, okay, this, this makes sense, pretty much what I expect. The numbers are in line with everything I would have thought of. So, so when we when we do look at it, first of all, we, sometimes what happens in the security space is that we not we get scared very quickly. You know, oh, everything looks scary, but the fact is that we are talking about you know public container images and how how do you put public container images on Docker? I can create an account and I can put every anything there. So it's not it has gone through a vetting process or anything else. So. Uh, as you said, of course, it was expected, but what we want to discuss here is that we companies should have, not only companies, anybody who is, uh, of course, everybody using container, they should have kind of processes, best practices in place, what containers, what images to use, what registries to use. So that's what I want to focus on. So tell me that, as you also said, hey, when I looked at it, I'm like, ah, yeah, of course. So tell me that what are the precautions people should take when they do use, uh, you know, container images from public places? You know, uh, there, there's plenty. And, and the, the good news on this front, which I'm very excited about, is, um, you know, as, as since we last spoke, I, I've been more involved with the OpenSSF and I've been, um, you know, participating in meetings and following all the things that are going on. Um, the one good news is this is a problem that people are aware of, right? Like we're we're now thinking about it, we're talking about it, we know that it exists, and it's a, it's a thing we need to worry about. Um, so obviously, the 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 simple one is um, you know scan the images and and you know like look into what's in there. the The real problem though um, is it's not in scanning, right? Because because um, and, and we've gone over this before, which is um, if, if I was an operations person today, uh, what does scanning do for me, right? It tells me that this image is bad, but what makes it a good image? How do I make it a better image? How do I fix the image, right? This is this is like the, the problem we've had in dependency management um, since like time immemorial in a way. It's like, oh, this, this dependency doesn't work. Okay, well, that's very useful information. Uh, and in a way, it's not like, what do you want me to do? Do I stop? Do I give up? Do I go back? Do I upgrade? Like, what do I do about it? Um, and so really, it, it comes down to that. So what can you do about it, right? So so one thing, uh, you know, one big challenge with Docker right now, uh, all Docker images, is you have, this, you have this dependency tree where something upstream changes and there is no trigger downstream, right? It, it has to be a pole model. Um, and so, you know, when you have your own CI CD pipelines, one of the things I recommend is always go from upstream, right? Uh, build images from scratch. And even if you change nothing, you change nothing in your code. So let's say you have a mom and pop, um, let's just say a little website that sells roses. Um, you haven't made any code changes, right? That's okay. Go through the CI CD pipeline because that pipeline is going to go upstream, pick up better Linux packages, you know, patched operating systems, patched whatever. And so we need to just do that over and over again in general. Um, that is my sort of 
obvious operational answer to um, the patching problem. When we look at security, the thing here is that you have to number one, you know, stay ahead of the curve because you cannot be in the game of, you know, and of course, uh, you have to pay so much attention to where you're pulling things from, keep your, you know, whatever you're running uh, fully patched. But also, I don't know how much it sense it makes, but companies should also, since you're also involved with the, uh, the Linux Foundation through the project, the companies, since almost every company is consuming some kind of open source technologies, they should also have some dedicated, like some companies have open source program affairs, you know, where they do know how to, so, to, so that you do have somebody who does understand how these things work, just because it's open source doesn't mean it's fully secure or, you know, it has been taken, no, that is not the case. So uh, that should also be part of the way you are building your organization. Yes, that that's very true. and. And you know this is it should be right, uh, but um, but it may not be practical. And I think this is exactly where uh, you know being a member of the Linux Foundation, right, paying membership dues, um, funds initiatives like the OpenSSF, and you know that organization can act as a as like a global uh, uh, what do you call it like a a, a patronage. Right, that sort of looks over across all of open source. So you don't have to spin up your own office. You don't have to um, vet every pro project individually. The OpenSSF can establish standards. They can establish best practices, right? And then they can, you know, give ratings or, you know, and, and we're, we're like, what, three months into it existing. So um, it's very brand new. It's really brand new. But um, but yes, like there there are a lot of things that come which are not vendor backed. Basically, there is no one name that you can go blame. There is no liability that you can <clears throat> you can push on to someone, and you you just need to be aware that this is this is like a couch that was left on the side of a street, and you've picked it up. Look, it's free. It's yours to do as you wish, but no one's guaranteeing that there's no bed bugs in there, and you need to you need to take accountability for that. Yeah, uh, having uh, an open source, you know, dedicated office can be tricky, but uh, for a small organization, you know, sometimes you know you have to manage resources. But in most cases, their CTOs, CEOs, they, they, they themselves are the one that who are running all those things, so they should be aware of that. One more thing is that when we do look at software or open source. We should think of it as supply chain. You should know where every single component is coming from. Sometimes, you know, people pull container. Oh, we are using this image. This, the, what is in there? You should know every single component that is running. As you earlier mentioned about patching and scanning, that is really important. Uh, that sometimes people pull it and they're like, I don't know what's in there. I just using this. You know, it works for me, and that's all it is. So treat that whole thing as you know, the supply chain issues, where the components are coming from, because any one component, and also if you are fully relying on the public registry, an update to that image might change the hard link where it's pointing to, and it has a lot of cases have happened. So it's running in your stack, so you should be very much careful about every single thing that is there. Yeah, oh, I, I, have, I have crazy stories about this. Um, uh, so, you know, we, we build Linux all the time, right? So, you know, we're famously known for rebuilding Linux for every machine, every 24 hours in the world. Um, so you see some really fun, bizarre things. Um, on, you know, so so first of all, we were the very first company to, to sort of recognize the problem of, um, there's a, so we, today, we, uh, or until today, we used to certify binaries, right? And and there is some value in certifying a binary, right? FIPS compliance famously works on an executable. But what, what you really more so need to certify is the whole thing that goes into making the binary, right? Uh, what was the source code? What was the compiler, right? How do you know that the compiler didn't inject a backdoor? How do you know that the source code doesn't have a backdoor? How do you know the binary actually came from that source code? Right. Uh, there is, you know, like there are so many trust me gaps in that supply chain. Right. We just assume that they exist. So, uh, you know, like we we assume that like I get this nginx and that's good. Right. But how do you know? You don't know the source code it came from. And and those conversations are now happening, you know, more broadly outside of Polyverse because people are realizing that that is a very legitimate um, thing to worry about. Um, you. 
you know, even when you think you have supply chain um, integrity, you actually don't. And my favorite example of this is, uh, you know, when we build certain RPMs or, um, you know, Debian packages, um, some packages actually don't even have the source code in them. So the source RPMs and source devs, what they have is a script that W gets the, the tarball from a third party location. And so we had to build uh, extra technology to, you know, to have interceptors that would intercept those outgoing requests and then have a complete closure of, of what goes into making even a single package. And so my point is you could have you could have what looks like a make file and you think that you're compiling from source code, but that make file could be pulling code from a third party location and you would never know in your scanners and your parsers. If I can just ask you to sum it, right? That, hey, you know what? Okay, you do want, you're tempted to use Docker images, right? So do you have like for a playbook that, hey, you know, these are some best practices that you can follow, uh, which of course will not eliminate, you know, security is never perfect, right? But you know, all you do is try to reduce the risk and try to add more layers to make it harder for bad guys, right? Okay, so, you know, and, and Ian Coldwater does a really good job of talking about Docker security and Kubernetes security, um, but, Basically, the summed up best practices, right? Um, um, there's two levels. One is the infrastructure. So on the infrastructure level, of course, have your APIs authenticated, right? Don't have open ports, don't have open sockets, that kind of stuff. Um, more so like when you run Docker images, don't run them as root by default. Um, I've been guilty of it. I continue to be guilty of running images as root. So um, I'm gonna be very honest, like I'm not being holier than thou, we're working on it, but it's hard. It's hard for all of us. Um, uh, may, you know, one of the great things with Docker is like all the port mappings do have to be explicit. So that's one huge benefit where you're not just accidentally leaving a port open. Um, but beyond that, if you're, um, and, and this is how I would sum it up, which is if you're running like one of many things, so that's, you know, like one Nginx, one Apache, one this thing, one that thing, right? Uh, you're experimenting, right? Go take public images, no problem, right? You're not, you're not really running uh, running a lot of co critical data through it. When you're running many of one things, um, that's when you start running into problems. And so that's when, like, if you're running like one big service, that's a bank, and that's one million containers serving one service, right? Um, that's where we come in and do diversity. Um, but but even more so than what we do, uh, you know, that's where build your own images, right? Uh, there's a there's a there's a between between a public Docker image and a private Docker image, which is a public Docker file. So what I would do is I would take the public Docker image's Docker file and and put it in my CI CD and then make sure that it it like I said just I would just rebuild it once a day, and then I'm I'm pretty much patched in the last 24 hours. One thing you mentioned was that yeah go ahead use it, but. In more or less like in your developer or testing it, not in the project number one. Number two is also, uh, even if you look at one specific, you know, there are five, you know, there are five different repositories that are offering the same image. You know, you'll find a patchy like by 10, by, you know, 10 different, you know, there. So you should also, I mean, you need to do some homework about, you know, where to pull that image. So, so it's not as easy. Hey, just, just grab it and get, get done. And if, you follow a lot of best practices that Archie's mentioned here, and you know all the other things are there. Uh, you know it's, it's it's no no harm, but as you rightly said, don't use those kind of things in actual production. You know it's uh, it's supply chain, so you do need to make sure, because that's part of your stack. So you will you you should not be plugging anything that you're pulling and plugging into your own stack and then offering it to your users. Arjis, thank you for, for not only discussing this uh, this uh, this report, which looked scary in the beginning, but actually it's not as you might say, oh, that's the reality is public, you know, our images. But what is really important, which you shared was the best practices that companies should follow when they do plan to use uh, Docker images. So once again, Arjis, thank you for talking about that. And I look forward to talking to you again soon. Same here, thank you for having me.